is ridiculous. All right, there, there we go. And sent. Oh, well, hi there. I'm Dottie Gunderson with the Minnesota Nice Historical Society, and I'm here to tell you about the very early days of something that, frankly, I just don't like. The internet. The year was 1991. The Twins Baseball Club won some award, Coach was on the air, and I was still teaching jazzercise. The internet was this hip new thing, and it was very much like it is today. A group of computer networks that are interconnected, kind of like how everyone in my hometown of Elks knows is sort of related. What was different back in 91 was the way folks connected to that giant network. One way was the World Wide Web, which is fine if you're a certain kind of person. But there was also another way, a nicer, more Lutheran way, and it was invented right here in Minnesota. It was called Gopher, and we're not talking about that hunk from the love boat, because he's from Iowa. The Gopher Protocol was created at the University of Minnesota by a team led by Mark P. McCahill. In those days, Minnesota was basically like Silicon Valley in California, but without the loose morals and the marijuana smog. I drove up to the U to find out more, even though my GPS wasn't working and my kids were too busy to pick up the phone. It's fine, don't worry, I didn't end up in a ditch or anything. Anyway, I sat down with Bob Alberti, one of the engineers on the project back then. So, Bob, I hear you were on something called the Gopher Protocol. Can you please explain to me what the Gopher Protocol actually is? The Gopher Protocol was the first tool that let anybody search the internet for something without knowing in advance where it was. Oh. So prior to Gopher, if you wanted to find something, you had to know where it was and then ask somebody for access to it. These days, the World Wide Web is a gosh darn mess. Sure, you can Google things, but it's so hard to find nice, wholesome information unless it's got a minion on it. Back then, things were much different. Any kind of information was hard to find. Gopher straightened everything out though and allowed good, hard-working folks to find what they need without having to bother anybody. So, how did, uh, how did Gopher come about? Uh, did you guys all get around and say you want to have your computers stack to each other? Or? Well, no, it was uh, interesting, actually. Uh, Gopher was the result of horrible bureaucracy. Oh. Uh, there was a team that was supposed to be building a, a program for the University of Minnesota uh, that had been meeting for three years and had a, a list of requirements this thick, but no oh. actual code. Okay. And so in between the April and May meetings of this team, my boss said, the heck with it. We're going to write a protocol in this month and debut it at the next meeting. And I was young and foolish enough to think that that would be well received by the people on the committee. Um, in fact, uh, there was a, a very nice lady in pumps who was jumping up and down screaming, you can't do this uh, at the May meeting. And so they prohibited us from working on Gopher anymore. They said, no, 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 you, you, you've broken all the rules. You can't do that. But they didn't prohibit us from giving Gopher to people at other colleges and saying, hey, you guys work on it. And so that's how Gopher went from being just a Minnesota-only thing to being a worldwide thing. Is because these guys started working on it. They got excited, passed it around, and basically Gopher became the world's first viral application. I tell you, there's nothing more viral than good Lutheran values and be a nice in front of each other, no matter how we actually feel. Now, since Gopher sounded almost too good to be true, I had to clarify one thing. So, would you say that Gopher uh, originally was very wholesome, very family friendly? It was extremely wholesome and family friendly. I like to hear that. It, uh, it could not convey images, oh. um, except as a, another kind of file, and so it was text only. Now, see, that's something I can get behind. Like, how do we bring back Gopher? Is there a way we can do that? Because I'd like to get rid of all that pornography out there. You don't need it. It's gross. It was those darn dirty pictures that allowed the World Wide Web to eventually surpass Gopher in popularity. Once the web was able to support images and modems started to get a lot faster, there was nothing stopping people from downloading all sorts of filth and nonsense. You know, folks, if you have that much free time on your hands, read a darn book like I do. Like Laverle Spencer, or Kathleen Woodowitz, or Nora Hess. Oh, oh my. Anyway.
Anyway, by 1994, the World Wide Web was on top, making the internet the overflowing porta potty we know today. You know what the internet is for? Not dirty pictures. It's also for uh, my Christmas email cards, because who doesn't want to see me dancing like an elf? I am adorable, and I, I look very good in an elf hat. I trust you do. Thank you, I do. I also really like those uh, uh, those videos of uh, food where the people are making it. You've got the camera above the head, and it's just, they're just making the food. I love those. Oh, that was great. Those are so nice. Okay, so there are maybe two good things on the internet. Other than that, it's a wasteland full of confusing photo jokes and poop cartoons. Now, I don't want to be too much of a gloomy gray duck. There is hope, folks. Is Gopher still around? Yes, uh, there are still Gopher servers. Oh uh, you can go out to sdf.org. Uh, they run a Gopher uh, center there that you can access. I've got a page out there that I neglect, like every other page I own. Uh, one other question. Um, can I play online poker? Yes, you can. <gasps> As long as you don't mind your letters, you know, three of hearts, three H, representing we'll your, your card. That's fine. As long as I can use my credit card and I can gamble a little bit on the internet, because if you do it on the, uh, on, online, it's not a sin because you're using your credit card as opposed to actually going into the sinner's den and using your cards there. So, folks, that's the story of the Gopher Protocol. A sweet, innocent little protocol that was brought down by another very un-Minnesotan protocol. Which, I guess, is what everybody wanted. But, like a true product of Minnesota, everyone thought it was leaving a while ago, but it is still here. This gopher protocol sounds perfect. It's, I think it's what you've been looking for your I whole life. I think it is. Oh yeah. my goodness. Until next time, I'm Dottie Gunderson, reminding you to cyber surf Minnesotan. <laughs>